Now let's get back into the podcast, Javier Reyes. We just discussed some of the biggest disappointments from teams in Major League Baseball, even throughout the whole entire free agent class from this past year. Basically, anyone that signed over 15 million, 15 million, 15 million annually has sucked this year. But how about some? Let's talk about some positives. Some guys that may be on some crappy teams or guys that just want to change up their situation. Who are you looking at as trade deadline targets? Because for me personally, as a D-backs guy, I'm like, you know what? We need some more bullpen help. The yeah. rotation after Gallon and Merrill Kelly's pretty weak. We talked about this team earlier in the podcast after they gave out their largest free agent contract to Andrew Bantendi. But I would like to maybe take some of those guys from the White Sox. They got Giolito. You got Lance mm-hmm. Lynn. If you want to get really crazy, you got Dylan Cease all in that rotation. That would be perfect number two and number three starters in this D-backs rotation. Plus, you got guys like Kendall Graveman in the bullpen. This White Sox team, I think, might be the biggest sellers at the deadline with guys like Tim Anderson, all those pitchers I just named. They've been a team floundering around. They've been a team that's talked about trading their rental players. It doesn't seem like the vibes are good right now in Chicago. It hasn't helped that way the last couple of years. So I think the White Sox are going to be the team that everyone's going to be trying to pick off at this year's trade deadline. I agree. The problem, and I I just want to preface this before we get into some some names and do more specifics, is this is a really weird trade market. Because on the one hand, I think that there are players on the Reds and the Giants that would be good. But those teams are good right now. And and maybe even the Pittsburgh Pirates, you know, yeah. maybe a, a Carlos Santana. But like those teams are good. So it's this weird kind of bizarro twilight zone we're in where like the bad teams that need stuff, it, it would usually be from teams like the, the White Sox and what or the Giants and the, the Reds. But those teams are good now. So like Alexis Diaz, brother of Edwin Diaz, um, like he's been amazing this year, but. I don't know if the Reds are going to part with him. He's like 26. Like maybe they're like, screw it. This guy could be our our closer for the future and we might as well just hang on to him. Um, it's it, it's it's a scary sight to behold. I mean, Nick Senzel is someone you could throw out there if people want him. But the other thing is with the White Sox guys, I agree. But the problem is none of them are playing well. <laughs> so it's like you have Luis Robert. Right. But yeah. I don't know if he's a guy that they want to sell. I think they're like, all right, if there's one guy we keep, it's him. Yeah. Like, okay, Lucas Giolito, but 3.54 isn't bad, but none of his stuff has been all that impressive. He's getting a little bit lucky with the X and all that. So that's not great. And then you have Dylan Cease, who would probably cost a lot more yeah, and is right. not pitching well this year. Very, very quietly, by the way. <laughs> what yeah. happened to Dylan Cease? I, I know, know. He's, he's been weird before, but like last year, he was one of the elite strikeout guys in the sport he was my Cy Young pick last year and I almost got it right um he's he's been a mess and Tim Anderson is not slugging which is never something he's known for but he's not hitting for average he's not getting on base and his defense stinks he's at like minus eight defensive front saves so far like it's it's a really weird market like I don't know and, and things are going to change maybe the the Reds come back down to earth maybe the Giants come back down to earth but like a month ago I would have told you Alex Cobb is the gem of the deadline I don't think that's going to be the case now, man. I, I don't, gonna, it's tough. We're going to see teams like the Reds and the Brewers and Pirates call up like the Dodgers and Padres be like, hey, what did it take to get one <laughs> yeah, of right. our players over here to our market, huh? <laughs> Let me get Mookie Betts to Cincinnati. Hey, let's do a little bit of that. Exactly, huh? man. Exactly. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. But like, like I remember, I think I'm going to look it up right now, actually. Like one of the first articles you, you find – when you type in like trade deadline targets, I'm pretty sure had like nine Giants and White Sox players and yeah. whatnot. And it's like, I don't think the Giants are going to sell like at this rate. Why should they? Especially if they beat the Padres again. I don't know if they have by the time people are watching this. Hopefully not. But it's it's just one of those rare bad markets, I think. And and there's some other guys that maybe maybe there are teams who do believe they're like, I can fix him with Lucas, Lucas Giolito and some of these other guys on the White Sox. And maybe I don't know, Brent Rooker of the A's or uh, some Seth Brown of the – oh, man, see, see, you already are like, oh, no. And they're having – it's just the name, really, because they're having – I have Brent Rooker in fantasy. He's been fantastic. It's more when you hear a trade yeah. like, yeah, we gave up a, a bunch of prospects for Brent Rooker today. You're like, ah, oh, that one's yeah, not yeah, like, Oh, no. <laughs> so those are some. And then uh, I do the Cardinals have anyone? Like they have a lot of outfielders, maybe like uh, – Hey, well, they got Carlson, Tyler O'Neill, who didn't they like bench at one point for not hustling? So maybe, maybe yeah, they're sick of him. So talking about big free agent contracts, I mean, Wilson Contreras has had a pretty <sighs> weird year with the St. Louis Cardinals. Another but, one, man. Yeah. It's crazy. It's like, let's sign this catcher, but then put him in the outfield and be <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what are we doing here? Like, that doesn't make much sense. Um, oh, yeah. my God. I think when looking at this, 
the trade target, I think it's going to be pretty pitcher heavy. I think there's going to be a lot more pitchers, but I do think your point is correct because just looking at the team like the San Francisco, San, excuse me, San Francisco Giants, mm-hmm. they're basically a roster just full of like B minus B players and they're winning games, but it's like all these players that could fill holes for like true contenders. You got the JD Davises and you got a Jock Peterson or Del Scafani or Alex Cop. Like they got all these guys that could be back in rotation guys or just like number six hitters in your lineup, guys that you need for that deep postseason run that can maybe give you a heroic moment or two. But it's like if I'm the Giants, I just tried to make a big splash in the free agent market. I already got all these. B level players. Maybe I try to go out there and get an A level player, and maybe I get early. I don't think anyone's trading for Otani at this deadline, but who knows? I mean, I think this is going to be a big pitcher deadline. The Cleveland Guardians, they just announced Tristan McKenzie is going to be out for a little bit. Maybe they yeah. want to get Shane Bieber. The Brewers, like you were just talking about, I mean, Corbin Burns, that kind of stuff has been circulating all year. They still got Woodruff and Freddie Peralta that they could potentially move as well. I think this is going to be a pretty busy trade deadline. I just don't know which way the acquisitions are going. Because like you said, we might see these teams that we didn't expect, you know, even two, three weeks ago to even be in the mix. All of a sudden they're calling the high market teams. Like teams are going to be calling the New York Mets and saying, what can we do to get Starling Marte off your roster? Or how can we get player X, Y, and Z off your roster? So I think it's going to be really interesting. Um, What do you think your Padres are going to do? Are you think Prowler's back in his bag getting aggressive or you're like, you know what, let's maybe shave a little payroll for not looking pretty by the deadline. But then the other problem is how do you shave the payroll? You know what I mean? So it's kind of like you might as well, like you can't, Absolutely. you're not giving away Bogarts. You're not giving away Tatis. You're not giving away Machado. One, because you're just not doing that. They're good. But then also they're not playing well. So that's not happening. You're not trading Soto because that's like the only guy you don't have under contract. And he's great. And you'd basically be giving up on the guy that you traded your entire farm for. You can't trade Darvish because you just extended him for six years. You can't trade Cronenworth. Because you uh, traded him, you extended him for seven years. So the only thing that comes to mind is like maybe another bullpen arm because they've had some injuries to a couple. Their bullpen has been great. Don't get me wrong, third best ERA in baseball uh, out of the pen at the time of this recording. But you know, no Drew Pomeranz, no Robert Suarez. Maybe they're like, let's go get. I I've been saying are all this Chapman because one he's oh, playing, he's pitching a little bit better for the Royals this year. I see, and more, and there's a little bit more merit to it is that they had a lot of reported interest. In him in the offseason they just ended up to end up signing him so Mm-mm. they'd be like let's get the guy this is what preller does you know what i mean he likes going after guys uh even if people have all soured on them and whatnot like the hater was a good example they'd had interest in hater for like three years and then finally they made it happen last year so who knows twitter mobs are gonna come after you for that one javi you want a little chapman action on your team uh-oh. i'm not saying i want it i'm not saying i want uh-oh. it let me be clear let me be clear out let's here him, don't you let's dare don't you dare i'm just saying what's a possibility you know what i mean i'm just saying what they might do uh mm. i don't think they need to but i feel like they'll make a move for just i'm not saying this is a good thing but for sake of just making a move i don't think preller can handle just sitting idly at the trade deadline so we'll see well, I am glad Brian Reynolds resigned because I'm tired of those trade rumors from the offseason. So thankfully preaching to the choir, my man. Preaching to the choir. Wrote, oh my God. I wrote about that at Just Baseball too, by the way. The headline was no matter what happens, at least Brian Reynolds' rumors are done. That was my takeaway. It drove me insane, man. <laughs> oh my God. And then just one sneaky team that I want to watch out for this deadline, maybe Miami, because we always talk about their pitching. Ooh. They already trade already added one Ooh. really good offense player in Luis arise this past offseason who's yeah. helped them tremendously they could get another bat in there with the way that they're already playing who knows sneaky team in the second half to potentially watch absolutely agreed 100 percent. 